In this video, I'm going to go over what you should do right after releasing your game on Steam. I'll go over the various tasks I do the second the game is out in order to increase the chances of success. This is my general to-do list that I have crafted over my 8 Steam releases. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. So first of all, this follows the previous video where I covered my to-do list for preparing a game to release on Steam. If you haven't seen it yet, go check the link in the description and then come back here. That video covers what should be done before clicking the release button, and now in this video we're going to look at what should be done right after you click the button. So you press the button and your game is now live. Congratulations, you have a game on Steam. Awesome. However, as a solo developer, you have to keep your celebration very brief. The second the game is out, there's a ton of work to do. The first thing you need to do is let people know the game is now available. Start off by making a Steam announcement. Players who are really looking forward to your game will click the follow button. And everyone who follows your game will get a pop-up in their Steam client. You can just make the announcement in the game page, which will work. However, if you followed my pre-release to-do list, then you will have created a developer page. In that page, you can post announcements and automatically publish them to your game. This is very useful once you have several games on Steam, since you can notify all of them about your new game release. Also, the players who added the game to their wishlist will get an email saying the game has just been released. So you can see why every developer, myself included, wants you to add their games to your wishlist and follow. Doing so greatly improves your chances of finding success. With the game out and available for purchase, now is a great time to make the trailer live on YouTube. Whether this has an impact or not will greatly depend on how much reach you have in your channel. For me, for example, I have quite a nice amount of reach on this channel, but almost nothing on my developer channel. So for me, the developer channel is solely for archival purposes rather than marketing. But if your developer channel is big enough, then publishing the trailer on YouTube and all your social media can be quite powerful. Either way, make it public on YouTube so you can start to share the trailer to people outside of Steam. Then post about the launch on Facebook and Twitter. Again, this really depends on the size of your following. Just make a simple message saying the game is out and include the trailer link. If you have a large following or just get lucky and go viral, this can be very impactful. If not, then you have a nice archive of your releases. Pin the message and keep following the to-do list. Keymailer is a great way to send keys directly to YouTubers and Twitch streamers. This is not a sponsored shoutout, I just really like their service and find it very useful. There are always new YouTubers coming up, so keeping an updated list is very difficult. Instead, here you just see the list, the stats of that influencer, and decide whether or not to send them a Steam key. This is a very easy way to send your game to people who might be interested in playing it. However, do remember the general issues with sending out keys. Some of the people who ask for keys have no intention of reviewing or doing a video. They just want to put the key up for sale and make a quick buck. So instead of sending to every single person who requests a key, make sure you set up a certain minimum. Like for example, only send to people who have more than 10,000 subscribers. How much you want to risk your keys ending up on third-party sites is up to you. But regardless, make sure you contact as many valid YouTubers and Twitch streamers as you can. If your game becomes popular on YouTube or Twitch, that can seriously boost your sales. Nowadays, it seems influencers are all that matters, but traditional press still has an impact. So go out and create your own list of press that covers games like yours. For PC games, the main one that covers quite a wide range of games is Rock Paper Shotgun. Once you have your list, send out the emails with the keys. Make sure you include a very short description of your game, like the one in the store page, as well as a link to the trailer. Look at other indie dev press releases to get an idea of how yours should look. It is very difficult to get press to write about your game, but if you do make it, it might help your reach quite a bit. So at this point, you've contacted YouTubers and the general press. Now it's time to contact your biggest fans if you have them. If you made a website for your game as soon as you announced, you hopefully also added a sign-up form for people to join your mailing list. Also, you can add a form in-game to let people sign up from the inside. If this is your first game, then chances are your list is going to be quite small. But as you make more games, your list will continue growing, which will help you in the future. So regardless of what size it is, send an email to those people. It can be similar to the press email, except targeted towards your biggest fans. Let them know the game is out, and include a call to action to buy your game. 
Emails are possibly the most powerful form of marketing, but also the most difficult. If you can get your biggest fans to buy your game at launch, then that increases visibility in the store, which in turn increases sales, and so on. So your goal as a career in indie game development should be to make games that these people love. The more fans you have, the easier it is to stay afloat in game development. In your Steam dashboard, you will find a place where you can directly connect with Steam curators. This is yet another great way to contact influencers and have them play your game. The main benefit of this system is it sends the game directly to their account rather than a Steam key, so you don't have to worry about your keys ending up on the black market. You have 100 curated copies you can give out. This is not a very large amount, so don't just send to every single person. Instead, look for reviewers who match up with your game genre. For example, there's no point in wasting a curated copy sending it to someone who only reviews visual novels if you have an action game. Also, you might get curators emailing you asking for a copy, get their curated name, then put it in the search bar to find them. As soon as the game is out and people are playing, you'll start to get some reviews. Make sure you read them to see if there's any hidden game-breaking bugs that someone has found or simply issues that can easily be fixed. Remember, Steam updates are free, so if someone reports a bug, try to fix it quickly and publish the update. Also, make sure you reply to reviews to either get more information from the person or clarify some misinformation especially on negative reviews. But remember that your reply is the official developer reply, so make sure you conduct yourself in a professional manner. Hidden in the negative reviews are the nuggets that improve the game and you as a game developer, so always be looking for those. Then when specific for early access games, if your game has been out for a while then you will have received reviews during early access. Some of those people might have enjoyed the game but just thought it was a bit too early. So, if you're going for a full release out of Early Access, make sure you reply to those old reviews, letting them know that the game has been significantly improved and is now fully released. Hopefully, some of those will try the game out again, and hopefully all the issues they had with the game have been fixed or improved. So hopefully you might be able to change some negative reviews into positive ones, which will greatly affect your score. Sometimes, the people who find bugs won't reply to your requests for their logs or save files, which can make it very difficult to fix whatever issue they found. However, if you follow the before launch do list, then you will have implemented cloud diagnostics. So head over to your Unity dashboard and check out what errors are being reported. With that error list and the feedback from your players, you may be able to deduce what went wrong. And even if you can't directly replicate an error, try to add some safeguards to make sure everything still works, even if the error still occurs. For example, one of the errors on Battle Royale Tycoon was a health bar that for some reason was being set to null. I've never encountered that error, the reference was always being set correctly in the constructor, so in the function that was throwing an error, I just add the simple if to test for null. Obviously, locating the actual underlying bug and fixing it is the best approach, but if that can't be done, then just make sure it doesn't actually break the game. If you implemented the workshop, then you should have also implemented a little widget to grab items from a collection. Now that the game is out, you should pay attention to the workshop and highlight new items that players make. Here is the workshop highlight being used in my game. As you can see, it rotates through all the elements in a collection, and the collection is this one. So in order to highlight certain player-made items, all I need to do is add it to the collection, and it automatically gets updated in-game. So if you did a similar implementation, remember to update this collection as players create more items. There are a lot of other stores where people also buy games. While they don't have the size of Steam, you should definitely not ignore them. As an indie dev, you need to spread out as much as possible. The top ones are Humble and GOG. For Humble, you can submit your game to the store and pretty easily get on there. The Humble store has a great dashboard where you can easily participate in weekly sales, which help quite a bit. And you can also use their widget to sell your game directly on the game's website. Their widget is what I'm using on the CodeMonkey website to sell the game bundle. Then you also have GOG, which is also pretty big, but more curated, so go ahead and submit your game, and maybe it'll be accepted. GOG also requires the game to be DRM free, so in case you do get accepted, make sure it's simple to remove your Steam integration. And then you have all the other stores like Green Man Gaming, Fanatical, Nuve, Itch, Gamersgate, Indigala, and more. Again, as an indie developer, you should put your game wherever possible in order to increase your reach and your chances of success. So that's the general to-do list that I follow after publishing a game on Steam. First, let your biggest fans know the game is out through the Steam announcements, then launch the trailer on YouTube, post about the release along with the trailer link on Facebook and Twitter, 
send keys to influencers through Keymailer, email the general press, send out a release newsletter to your mailing list, use Curator Connect to send copies to matching Steam curators, read reviews as they're posted and analyze what is incorrect and what can be improved, if your game was in early access, contact old reviewers and let them know of the full release. Monitor the Cloud Diagnostics dashboard and attempt to fix errors even before they're reported. Highlight the cool items players have created in the workshop. And contact other stores to spread your game as much as possible. If you do all of this, then your chances of success will be much greater. I wish you the best of luck with your game release. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more game dev videos and Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.